I don't know, this is gonna be so hard. This is why I've avoided this. I don't wanna share any of this. I just like to have a drink with my dinner. Am, am I an alcoholic? We've kind of intentionally not talked about it publicly because we had a lot to deal with internally. I don't even know how to start this video because for one, at this point, it feels like not a big deal to me because it's been a while. For two, I feel like Cullen should be in it with me, but I also feel like our stories are very different. And when I think of us like making ourselves sit down and talk about this together, I don't know, it just makes me feel weird. But I know I need to make this video because it helped me to see other people who made these videos and talked about their journey and <sighs> for 12 years. <laughs> Jeez Louise. This is obviously why I haven't made this video yet. For 12 years, we have been sharing basically every detail of our lives on the internet. For seven years, I believe, straight of literally every single day of our lives vlogging. So one of the ways that I've always, and I think for Cullen too, dealt with major things that are difficult for us or that we're going through is to share about them and talk about them <laughs> because it's kind of therapeutic for us and it helps us, but I know it also is helpful to other people. And that's why we've kept doing, <laughs> I did not mean for this just to be an emotional crying video. <laughs> so bear with me while I get to the point. <laughs> um, that's why we've kept doing what we've kept doing. In this business, there's a lot of like, crap you have to deal with and opinions and negativity and all that. But there's also a ton of positive. And the reason that we've kept going is because we've been through a lot of ups and downs that when you're alone in it, feel very isolating and like you're the only one going through it. And so I know that seeing other people talk about it or being able to share about it helps other people not feel so alone. So that's why I'm We've kept going. I'm like sitting here crying and then I'm also sitting here going, this is really not a big deal. People are gonna be like, you're crazy. But it is a freaking big deal. Cullen and I both quit drinking alcohol. It's been almost exactly a year ago. What's today, the 15th? So tomorrow will be 11 months for me and Cullen's like a couple weeks behind that number. When I posted about it on my Instagram stories, I mentioned how I was never like a big drinker. It was like a drink or two with dinner and then, you know, on a special occasion or a weekend or a vacation or whatever, um, it would be a little bit more than that. So in that way is one of the reasons I feel mine and Cullen's stories are different. And when we've talked about sharing together, I feel weird about that because I feel like my journey through his journey has been individual to me and his journey through my journey has been individual to him and then our journey together has been together and we just have different perspectives of everything but it's scary to talk about like I I don't know I don't want to share any of this because I feel like in the past when we've shared about things that we've struggled with it's obviously helped people and we've gotten a ton of supportive positive messages and responses and like connections with people. But then on the other hand, it's a lot of pressure to feel like, okay, I've shared this now. Now I have to be perfect and I can't screw up. And now everybody's going to question me or anytime they see me in a video holding a can of something, they're going to be like, Oh, I thought you weren't drinking. Well, I'm probably not. It's probably not even <laughs> alcoholic drink. And it's not just that. I don't know. I feel like we've kind of intentionally at the beginning of this process, not talked about it publicly because we had a lot to deal with internally. If you're not like in it and haven't been through any of this, um, alcoholism and addiction in general is a family disease and it affects everybody that somebody who drinks is close to. It affects people, oh gosh, dad gum, that didn't know, this is gonna be so hard. This is why I've avoided this. <laughs> It affects generations to come, even that aren't like physically connected to you. Cullen can tell his own story if he wants to. But for me personally, my parents didn't drink when I was growing up. My mom's dad did, and he was an alcoholic, which I hope she doesn't mind me saying that, but hopefully she won't, because I think it's an important thing to share. But a lot of times there's patterns and things in a family that continue even if there's not alcohol involved and somehow 
that turns into the pattern continuing through a generation. So for somebody who I never even met, um, my mom's dad passed away before I was born, before my sister was born. Not, neither of us ever knew him, which I hate that. And to think that that affected her, my mom, and then in turn affected us, even though she chose not to drink. It's just hard to think about that. And I have to think about that myself when I'm thinking about the choices I'm making for myself and with my kids that the way they see me, uh, I should probably get a tissue and quit just wiping my snot on my hand. <laughs> the way they see me handle alcohol or whether they see me drink is just as important as how I talk to them about it, how we discuss it, how we kind of openly discuss what Cullen and I have gone through. I saw a TikTok that Cullen actually sent me the other day right after I had posted my Instagram stories of a girl being like, if I have one drink a night, am I an alcoholic? Or she, I think, even said, it's at least one drink. I just like to have a drink with my dinner. Am, am I an alcoholic? First of all, that's a subjective question and something that she would need to answer herself. But second of all, because she's thinking about it, I means she recognizes that it's something that probably bothers her in the sense. That was more me on my side of it, where I don't necessarily consider that I was an alcoholic. It was a whole different relationship with alcohol for me than it was for Cullen. For me, I was more of like a take it or leave it, but if he's gonna take it, I'm not gonna leave it because we're both in the same house. I'm like, I don't wanna just be sitting here not drinking if he's drinking, you know what I mean? <laughs> and that's a big part of the whole thing. But I do know that stopping something that you're used to doing and that's a habit and that you've used as a coping mechanism and that you've kind of just like become accustomed to doing in certain situations is still really hard, whether you consider yourself an alcoholic or not. I mean, I don't know, maybe I am too, but I know that approaching holidays and approaching different things where we were always drinking before, it wasn't necessarily that it was hard to like say no. I can see people drinking and I don't care. Like it doesn't bother me. I don't go, oh, I really wanna have one of those. It was more of like a, if somebody told you, you couldn't put your Christmas tree up in your house anymore. Like, we're just gonna give that up. Like, that would be kind of hard and you would be like, okay, I understand for whatever reason we don't put a Christmas tree up in our house anymore, but like, I kind of miss it, you know? Like, I miss the Christmas tree. It was a, it was a nostalgic feeling. It didn't like do anything for me. I was not addicted to my Christmas tree, but like coping with a situation where there's usually something there and then there's not was a difficult part for me. It wasn't like physical, like, withdrawal symptoms or like really, really wanting to just get hammered. It was more of like, I'm used to having a drink in my hand. I'm used to the feeling of that I can just kind of like know I'm gonna check out for a little bit and like relax. So that was, that was a hard thing for me about it in the beginning. But the reason I'm even making this video is because I wanna be able to talk about it and I wanna be able to share about it because I feel like there's so much that I wanna share. And I feel like so many people are in similar situations where you're not like, daggum, I'm living under a bridge homeless and I have a problem. That's the small majority of alcoholics. There's a million alcoholics that you interact with every day that you don't even know that they have a problem. The story that I posted and shared on Instagram said, if you recently quit drinking and feel crappy, don't worry. This isn't what sobriety feels like. This is what detoxing from a poison feels like. Keep going. And that's so important. I see a lot of people, I know a lot of people who will say, I'm gonna quit drinking for 30 days, or I'm gonna do dry January, or I'm gonna you know, give it up for a couple weeks because I've been drinking too much. But in the back of your head, you're always going, but I'm gonna start again, like after these 30 days, I just need to like give myself a break and see if I can do it. Well, that's gonna be freaking hard because you know it's still an option for you. If you're somebody who's been pregnant before and had to quit drinking for a pregnancy, it's not hard to turn down a drink really when you're pregnant because you know you can't. So when that option just isn't even there, like you know you're not gonna do it for your own personal reasons, it doesn't really matter as much. But when you're like, God, like there's really no reason, like I could, and dang, I can't wait. If I can just make it through this, I'm gonna put off all my emotions and all the things I wanna deal with until I can drink again, it's gonna be a lot harder. The beginning feels crappy like that. Instagram post said. That's not what not drinking for almost a year, which is the point I'm at, feels like. 
it feels nothing like it did in the beginning. My Instagram story that I shared, which I don't know where these words even came out of or like what made me decide to just randomly post about it that day other than seeing that and being like, that's a great explanation and that's what I wish more people knew that what you deal with and what you go through when you try to quit the first week or two weeks or three weeks or first two months is not what it feels like in the end. My post said the first month was an emotional roller coaster. First few months were better, but it was still weird figuring out how to feel in the evenings. What are we supposed to, like, I, I usually don't feel normal like I do during the day in the evening. So like, what do I do with this? And then the first holiday felt strange and almost like boring. Not in a sense of like, you can't have fun when you're drinking, but in a sense of like, you look forward to the drinks and the feeling that you have when you drink and the release and the letting go. And so it was almost like, wait, so this is just the same as a regular day? And so going through that was figuring out like how to still enjoy those things. And then I said in my post, now at 330 days in, all 24 hours of the day feel 110% better than any of the hours of the day when I would just have a drink with dinner to wind down the day. So the difference for me was that I would like allow myself to look forward to if I'm having a bad day, okay, I know I'm gonna feel better later because I'll have a drink. Now it's like, I don't, have to even worry about that or think about that. I'm like, no, I just need to like get it together and feel better now. <laughs> and so I'm able to enjoy the other parts of the day. It's kind of, I feel like it's kind of hard to explain. I truly did not think that quitting drinking would have such a positive effect on my life since it wasn't that much that I was drinking. And I think a lot of people, according to the messages that I got, kind of have that same perspective and I had that same perspective when I would see people share. There's a girl who I've followed for a while, years, several years, that recently quit drinking as well and was kind of in a similar situation. And I think she's about a year ahead of me. Her Instagram name is Loser Mentality and I love her, she's great. But she shared a lot about her journey and I would always see her posts and I would be like, oh, that's me, like I feel that way too. Maybe I should quit and there would be days when I'm like, okay, well, I'm not drinking tomorrow. Like I drank tonight, but I'm not drinking tomorrow. And then it's not so much of like, you can't resist it. Well, maybe that actually is what it is. As I'm sitting there making dinner and there's still a, you know, like sweet fruity beverage in the refrigerator. And I'm like, I'm a grown ass adult. I can like have a drink if I want to. What's the big deal? And so then I would, and then I'd be like, oh, I should probably just not do this, even though it didn't feel like it was affecting me that much. I just got a lot of questions that made me be like, I, I wanna share about this. I wanna talk about this, and I wanna talk about my journey and our story. And I just went ahead and decided to make this post because I just wanted to talk about it. One of the questions that I got in a DM was, what was your motivation for quitting? I feel like I'm you, and I truly do enjoy drinking on vacations and holidays, and I'm not a heavy drinker at all. What benefits have you seen? Sorry if I missed this explanation. A lot of it had to do with Cullen and me and our relationship. And like I said, his journey is for him to share. It really all came like to a <laughs> screeching halt into a head last summer. I was kind of, I've always kind of been like on the same track of like, I'll have a drink here or there, one with dinner, whatever. For him, it was just kind of continuing to get more and more and starting to kind of interfere with life and functioning. <laughs> And there came a point where I was like, I can't, I can't do this anymore with the level of intensity of the drinking, um, like on his end and how that was affecting, how I was letting that affect me. This isn't healthy for me or for the kids or for our relationship. So I can't be in a household where this is going on. And I decided that for me personally, it was important for me to not drink as well. Um, I felt like that was hindering me as far as being able to enjoy things. Like there was just a general overall like feeling of blahness and not enjoying things unless it was at the nighttime or it was, and I don't know that I like actually wasn't as much as I was like just going, well, it'll be more fun tonight or it'll be, if I can just make it through this day, then I can have a drink. Whereas now it's like, the whole day is the same so i can actually enjoy all of it because i don't feel foggy and like i'm more clear-headed had that not all come to a head i don't know that i would have necessarily stopped 
but I'm so thankful I did. Like nobody is thankful for going through really tough times or dealing with relationship issues. But had that all not happened, I wouldn't be where I am. And I wouldn't have made that decision. I don't think, who knows? We can't all predict what would have actually happened or what wouldn't have. There's just so much in my head that I wanna share and so many different feelings I have about everything that I just, I can't compartmentalize it into all into one thing. I'll talk more about that, hopefully upcoming, if I can make it through this video and actually post this and feel confident enough to make some more. Somebody else also wrote and said, would you guys make a video, feel comfortable making a video, sharing more about this? I'm curious if you thought you had a problem or just needed a health change, um, how did it happen? Did it change your friends? I remember seeing a lot of friends you had in the neighborhood that you had drinks with, was it hard to say, hey, we still wanna hang out but not drink? Zero judgment, but just so curious. I think Cullen realized it was a problem for him, and then I realized that it was also impacting me and was becoming a problem for me as well. Whether it was a major problem or a minor problem, it doesn't matter. If something is, you're questioning like, oh, is this making me feel worse? Is this like keeping me from being happy? Is this keeping me from feeling like I can do this or that? then it's a problem. Like it doesn't matter if you're living under a bridge homeless or if you just like think that one drink a night is impacting you in any way. If you think that it's causing you to not be as nice to your kids as you wanna be. If you think it's causing you to actually only be nicer to your kids while you're drinking, then they get the bad version of you the next day in the morning until you have a drink. It doesn't matter how big of a problem it is. If it's something that's bothering you, then it's something that is gonna be considered a problem. As far as friends, our neighborhood and our friends are like incredibly supportive and we could not be more thankful for the friends that we have. In a lot of circles that we previously would have hung with, it would have been really hard to not drink and there would have been a lot of pressure of like, seriously, come on, you gotta have a drink. How in the world are you not gonna have a drink? But the people that we have been friends with in our neighborhood are so supportive and somebody decides not to drink and they're like, okay, good for you. I probably need to do the same. And that's that. We have probably not been to as many social functions as we had before, not because necessarily we don't wanna be around the drinking, not because we don't wanna be around the people, not because people haven't been supportive, but because just like a lot of our mindset has changed. And a lot of it is, like I said at the beginning of this video, just like getting through this privately, dealing with a lot of internal stuff that goes deeper than was I drinking one too many drinks a night? There's a lot of deep stuff behind it. A lot of like way years back stuff. A lot of like things that you have to deal with when you quit drinking of dealing with your own emotions. Instead of drowning them every night, you actually have to start like making some mental and emotional changes. And that's been, it's definitely been a benefit. It sounds hard and honestly probably would have been one of the reasons I'd have been like, well, I can't do that. So I'm not stopping <laughs> um, in the beginning, but it's important. And for me, looking at my kids and knowing that it's more important for me to be present and the best I can be for them and to change the generational cycles that have happened in my family and Cullen's family, both for our kids who are going to be 100% more prone to become alcoholics or to just marry an alcoholic, even if they're not themselves. I don't want them to have to deal with that. I don't want them to have to deal with either side of it, but the chances they're going to are pretty high whether Cullen and I stop drinking or not, whether Cullen and I talk to them about it every single day and how important it is to be true to yourself and stay on the right path and all that, they're still more likely to become alcoholics or to marry an alcoholic or to be in a relationship, whatever you wanna say, with an alcoholic at any point in their lives. And it sucks, like it sucks knowing that and knowing that I don't want them to deal with what we've had to deal with. But if me stopping drinking and dealing with some of my emotions not just related to drinking, but related to those generational cycles and patterns of the alcoholic family and how things are handled and how things are, it's hard, I don't know. It's hard to explain, it's hard to explain. And I think that's another reason that I've been like afraid to make a video about it. Cause I don't wanna say the wrong thing. I don't wanna come across as like 
feeling like I know everything and whatever else, because I don't, like I totally don't. But I do feel like I'm at a point at almost a year in where I can confidently say, I don't have any thoughts of turning back and drinking again. I don't have any question of whether it was the right decision. I know it was the right decision. Speaking of kids, that was just a phone call from Brooks. He's at a summer camp and he's got a tummy ache. So <laughs> I'm gonna wrap this up, but I do have, I do wanna talk about it more. I think it's just the whole thing makes me a little bit anxious um, as far as sharing and then the path that that brings us down after we share something as far as like everybody's so supportive. Everybody's great and wonderful. We shouldn't let the few that aren't get to us. I feel like we tend to, to lose people and lose people's trust when we talk about things like this. And so I just pray that this reaches the people that it needs to reach. If it impacts one person's perspective one person's life in a positive way then it was worth it screw all the rest of the negativity because it doesn't even matter thank you guys for listening to me ramble and cry and for being here let me know if you have questions because i really i would love to talk about it and i feel like there's so much to talk about that i don't even i don't even know where to start so give me give me some questions and let me know what would be helpful for you and i would love to talk about it more